Dying Light is a game that's very near and dear to my heart because it is one of, if not my favorite game of all time. Which for a lot of you will probably come as a big surprise considering that most of the reviews for the game weren't anything overly positive and overly um, fantastic. But there is a community for this game. A community that holds this game at a high regard and holds this game at a very high esteem because Dying Light with many of its problems it's not a perfect game no game is but it is tremendous amount of fun and it is a game that I have put hundreds of hours into and I will probably put hundreds of more hours into it and hundreds of hours into the sequel Dying Light 2 which is scheduled for 2019 and one of the reasons I'm so excited about Dying Light 2 is unlike a the next main series Fallout game which has to do a lot, a lot of core changing to the base of Fallout 4 to actually improve it. Dying Light has a very fixable problems. The core is there, but there are a lot of things that are holding Dying Light back from being even better and that I hope to see fixed in the sequel. One of the most obvious and most notable changes that a lot of people have complained about for Dying Light and hope to see fixed for the next game is the story. The story is one of the things that is the most obvious that Dying Light did bad and just mostly fell on its face trying to attempt a deep story with the villain Rise, with the supporting characters like Raheem, Jade. I don't care about any of them and nobody really does. None of them are really great characters. Um, there's only a couple memorable NPCs throughout the world that gives you quests. Ghazi is obviously one of them because <laughs> if mom ain't happy, nobody happy. Um, characters like Brecken, who you were originally going to play as, has a lot more character than the main protagonist, Crane, who is just basically a blank slate. Has no defining qualities whatsoever. You can't, he's not really even a character. He's just somebody that is an outlet through the player into the world. He is not a character per se. I mostly just forget that he's even there and just put myself in his shoes and act like I'm in the game. Because there's two kinds of immersion in my mind there's immersing yourself into another character and then immersing yourself directly into the game. Games like Fallout go for the latter, try to make you create your own character, put yourself in the game. Games like Skyrim try to do that and they do that very well. But then there's also games like The Witcher or The Last of Us where you're supposed to immerse yourself into that specific character. Dying Light tries to do that. They try to have you get immersed through Crane. But since Crane is such a terrible protagonist with no character whatsoever, He's just so forgettable. And major spoilers for the following here, but in the end of the following expansion, no matter what ending you choose, Crane dies. And I could care less. It would have been so much more interesting if we would have played it as a character like Brecken. Or even Jade they could have done a little bit more with. But characters like Jaden, Rahim, and Omar, or all these names, Nobody cares about them, and so when they die, it doesn't matter. Putting aside the story, let's get into the meat and potatoes of Dying Light, the reason that people like me and the Dying Light community have stuck with the game, and that's the two main core aspects of the gameplay, and that's parkour and combat. Many people tout Dying Light as just Dead Island with parkour, which, if you look at the very core, you can make that comparison, but it is so much more. It does so much things better. The combat is way smoother. It obviously still shares that melee focused combat, but they have a whole skill tree that is way better than Dead Islands. One of my pet peeves of video games is skill trees that are just base boosts, like percentage based increases in the character's abilities. Dying Light has one of the best skill trees that I've ever seen. And I hope Dying Light 2 has an even better one since they've said it has over twice as many parkour moves. 
But the thing that makes Dying Light skill tree so good is that every time you level up, you know you're going to get a useful ability that doesn't just make you stronger, but changes the gameplay as a whole. It's not just, oh, my melee combat is increased 5%. That's obviously what the legend levels are for, but that's kind of tacked on later on, just for something that end game players can do. But when you level up, you can get the drop kick, which completely changes the unarmed combat. You can get different parkour moves, like being able to climb off of walls, do wall runs. The grappling hook you obviously get way at the end of the skill tree, which completely changes parkour. I'll probably get into that in a different video, but I kind of think that the grappling hook maybe even decreases the value of parkour and is overall bad for Dying Light, but it's still a huge change of gameplay which I think most skill trees in modern games, even if you look back to Skyrim. Skyrim had a terrible skill tree. A lot of people will probably argue with me on this, but the UI for it I did not like. Leveling up, trying to get to a certain spot, it all just felt boring because it was just base upgrades to make your character stronger, which I think is a really lazy way to do it. But the main problem I see with Dying Light's skill tree is that you level up way too fast. You do feel that every time you level up you earned it and you earned that new ability that you unlocked and it's so nice getting that feeling but you get overpowered in this game way too fast. If you just don't do any side missions, don't do anything outside of the main story, once you get maybe even halfway into the story you'll already be at a very good level. And it kind of takes away from the early tense moments that you see in the background, because this is um, one of the newer saves I've started. You have a pipe, you have a wrench, weapons that you cannot use effectively against hordes of hundreds of zombies. So you have to think smarter. But when you can get a gun right off the bat, and you can get overpowered weapons like EXP Caliber, the... Korak machete, it takes away the tense moments when you can just mow through hordes and you get to that level way too fast. Things like the grappling hook should be achieved even further down the line. They should be super end game because it just takes away the parkour element when you can just grappling hook everywhere. It takes away the thought of, oh, I have to go around this area because I know that zombies are there, a whole bunch of zombies are there and it takes away a lot of the thought process. When you can just take out a katana or a machete and just mow through hundreds of zombies, if you can pull out grenades and just blow up hundreds of zombies, you get to that level way too fast. And I feel like the XP process should be slower, unlocking new things should be slower. Dying Light 2 I think is gonna be able to do this a lot easier and they kinda have like a different way about doing it. Since they'll have more abilities, it'll obviously take longer to get all of them so they don't necessarily need to decrease the time at which you get to those specific abilities. One main thing that I despise about this game is the setting could be a lot better. Haran is mostly dull and boring. It is pretty immersive in that it's a mostly realistic world. They have Old Town, which is a step above in terms of actual aesthetics and how appealing it is to look at. The zombies and buildings are mostly uninspired and boring, unlike a game like Hollow Knight, which has a distinct um, visual style. And you might think it's very unfair to compare a game that's 2D to a game that's 3D, and two games that have very distinct play styles and themes, but that certain games can have a distinct art style that keeps people coming back to the game and Dying Light, not necessarily in that certain way, but could have a very distinct art style and design that, just because of that, is another reason why people would want to come back, along with the gameplay and along with the narrative. Moving away from the core of the game, we have some things that just annoyed me personally, and I think, if fixed, could make for a much better Dying Light in the sequel. The gunplay is very mediocre. Maybe that's by design to discourage guns, but... I think it's a very lazy way of going about it just to have a terrible system 
just a terrible gameplay system. Um, late game creating medkits is very tedious. You just have to sit there spamming X. If there was a way you could mass produce certain things like lock picks, med kits, that would be um, very convenient for players later on in the game who don't really need to grind for those certain materials and just want to make their weapons and other things. I feel like some abilities like camouflage are way too overpowered and make it so you can get through the game way too easily if you just pour some zombie blood onto you. Things like safe houses could have been explored further. Something like, kind of like Fallout 4, I hate to keep making this comparison, but the settlement system where you can maybe build up certain safe zones, the survivors you find out in the world you could even send back to your safe zone. That's one thing about Dying Light that's completely pointless. You just get a couple hundred dollars for saving somebody out in the world. What if they went back to your safe house and made that safe house more secure and the materials you find out in the world you could actually use to upgrade your safe house and maybe if your safe house isn't secure enough then zombies would actually be able to break in and you'd have to do some kind of defense minigame. I think that's something that they haven't really shown off anything similar to this in Dying Light 2 promotional material so far and I don't really think it's going to happen in Dying Light 2 but maybe even in Dying Light 3 or a Dying Light 2 DLC that would be such a great addition. I feel like the contrast is too low that could be something that would really be able to spice up the world. Um, the following DLC which is something that I've never really been a fan of which a lot of people are and I can understand that the driving is very fluid, the driving is very explored and nice. It's not clunky at all. It controls so well, the dune buggy you get. But that's really it. The only thing that's really in the following for you to do is drive around, which is fun but gets very repetitive and very boring. The parkour is toned down since it's just wide open fields. The map is too large for no fast travel. And getting around the map which is the main thing that holds that down is just not fun because you're just running through open fields and if you're not running you're driving which gets old after a while another thing is I want more distinct landmarks places like infamy bridge places like the antenna tower from late game places that you can tell somebody where you are and them actually know if you look at the gameplay in the background if you had to tell somebody where you were without using the map, how would you do that? How would you narrow it down to your distinct location? It would really be very difficult because places like this aren't important at all and are kind of just there. They don't really have a place in the narrative. They don't really contribute to the map at all. It's mostly just pointless and it's mostly just there for the sake of being there. And the last thing, which isn't really wrong with Dying Light, but could be improved and could be explored in the future, is there's really no cosmetic system at all. There's obviously outfits you can find, but I feel like cosmetics are a thing that I really love in video games that are kind of taken for granted, which is the ability to customize your character. That's one thing that is kind of held back by Kyle Crane. You can't really create your face or really go off in a super weird way with your outfit. There's distinct enough outfits from the rest, like, oh, this outfit's a different color, this outfit has glowing orange lights, this outfit's green. But none really sets you apart. And I feel like if there's a character customization and it focused more on RPG elements, which we've kind of seen a little bit in Dying Light 2, it'd be a lot better. But I hope that there isn't a single protagonist, and I hope there's a character customization, which is something that I really want. Um, one of my dream games is just a zombie apocalypse, basically survival simulator, where it's an RPG and you can affect the world around you, which I really hope Dying Light 2 is able to do. This is me kind of just ranting around with things I didn't like about Dying Light, although I still absolutely love this game. It just has some problems that, if fixed, could make for a much better sequel. 
and a game that hopefully is noticed by a lot more eyes and keeps a lot of people interested in the series. I hope you enjoyed my little take on Dying Light, Dying Light 2, things that Dying Light did wrong that I want to see fixed. That's my kind of little rant if you want to call it that, but I hope you enjoyed the video and goodbye.